In this video, I want to look at chi-square analysis. A chi-square analysis is a type of hypothesis test that looks for associations between categorical variables. For chi-square analysis, our null hypothesis is going to say that there's no association between our two variables, and the alternative hypothesis will say there is an association between the two variables. So let's look at an example. Let's go back to this two-way table that looks at if individuals are obese and if they have diabetes that we have dealt with in the previous two videos. In this case, the null hypothesis would say that there's no association between obesity and diabetes. The alternative hypothesis would then say there is an association between obesity and diabetes. So chi-square analysis is a way to test these associations between two-way tables, as we see here. So what we did here was step one, build the hypotheses. So step one, build our null and alternative hypothesis. Step two is then to set our value for alpha and find our degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is determined by counting the number of column categories minus one, times the number of row categories, minus one. Alpha will either be given to us in the problem or we can use the standard value for alpha, which is 0 0.05. So let's see if we can do this for our given example. Here's my two-way table. As I said before, the standard value for alpha is 0 0.05. My degrees of freedom I look at the number of column categories. There are two column categories, minus one. I then multiply by the number of row categories. There are two row categories, minus one. So this is one times one, or one. So our degrees of freedom here is one. Now that we have step two, we can move on to step three which is to compute the test statistic. Our test statistic is calculated, which is denoted by chi squared, so the Greek letter chi, which kind of looks like an x squared, hence the name chi-square analysis. This is the summation of, so we're going to add up a bunch of things, and we're going to add up observed minus expected squared over expected. And my sum is over each cell of my table. So for each cell in my two-way table, the observed value is the actual value in the cell. We need to calculate this expected value, and then we perform this calculation for each one. And the expected value comes from the row total times the column total divided by the overall total. So let's look at our problem and see if we can figure this out. We need to start by finding all of our expected values. So we'll start with, we'll call this one, two, three, and four. These are my four cells that I need to compute the expected value for. Let's start with cell one. Well, the column total is 40. The row total is 30, divided by the overall total of 100. And if I work this out, I get 12. So I'm gonna write a 12 in parentheses here so we can remember this. For cell two, my column total is 60. My row total is 30. And we had 100 total observations. So this expected is 18. So I'll write my 18 here in parentheses. For cell three, the row total is 70 and the column total is 40. So we have the 70 and the 40 divided by my 100 total gives me 28. So I'll put a 28 here. And then finally cell four, we have 70 and 60 as my two totals, divided by 100 overall total gives me 42. So I'll put 42 in parentheses here. 
So now I have all of my expected cell values. Now that I've done that, I can actually find the value of chi-squared, my test statistic. So for each one of my values, I do the observed minus the expected. So for cell 1, I have 20 minus 12. Squared divided by the expected, which is 12. For cell 2, we had 10 observed, 18 expected, squared divided by the expected 18. For cell three, 20 minus 28 squared divided by 28. And for cell four, 50 minus 42 squared over 42. As we work these out, this is 5.22 plus 2.29 plus 3.56 plus 1.52. So my test statistic, I add these all up to get a total test statistic of 12.7. We can now move on to step four. Step four is to find the p-value. For this, we'll need to use a chi-squared table. We use our degrees of freedom that we found in step two and our test statistic that we found in step three in order to see our p-value. Here I have a chi-square table. Yours may look a little bit different, but they should overall be approximately the same. We had one degree of freedom, so we're gonna consider this first row right here, and we move along to find 12.7. We move along to find our test statistic of 12.7. We can see it's nowhere along this row. The largest number we have is 7.879. And that's corresponding to the p-value of 0 0.005. So what we can say is our p-value is smaller than 0 0.005. So here I had my test statistic and we'll say the p-value is smaller than 0 0.005. We can then move on to our final step, the conclusion. And this will work the same as every other hypothesis test. We have that our p-value is 0 0.005, and we know alpha is 0 0.05. So we can see that our p-value is smaller than alpha. This means that we then need to reject our null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis said that they were not related at all. So since we're rejecting that, we have evidence to show that diabetes and obesity are associated.